Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Because you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Welcome to Charmed Life, a radio show discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome everyone to another episode of Charmed Life, broadcasting live from the Universal Broadcasting Network studios in Hollywood, California. I am your host, Trisha Carr. So nice to be with you today on this beautiful Sunday here in Southern California. It's really sunny and gorgeous. And then we're going to whine in a little bit because it'll be like, you know, 62 or something horrible. But um, really grateful to um, be with everyone. And um, if it's your first time tuning in, if you're watching on the YouTube channel or if you're um, catching us on podcast, your timing is perfect. We will be taking live calls today. And the phone number is 323 323- Five two four two five nine nine, and uh, the topic today is um, well. I think a lot of us that certainly, if you're listening, you probably relate to these topics. We're going to be talking about highly sensitive people, creative people, and empaths. Uh, that's just the general topic. I have a wonderful in-studio guest. I'm very excited to welcome this person. He's um, a lovely soul and a dear brother, and his name is Cameron Gelman. Hi, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I, I, I mean, I can't wait to continue uh, just kind of talking about the same stuff that we always talk about. So, yeah. You know. yeah, we do. We just kind of sit around and, and like talk for hours and don't even know where we've gone. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that 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 kind of naturally comes with for me uh, how new this whole process is. Yeah. You know, I think it's one thing to be uh, sensitive and I think it's sure. another to start understanding what that means yeah. and how to be a productive, sensitive person because yeah. I think that it sort of a package deal. It comes with being all over the place and having all these creative aspirations and and uh, you know sort of wanting to do a million things at once and and be everybody's friend and you kind of don't take care of yourself. Yeah. So the last year for me has been really, really about learning how to uh, how to be you know kind of me. That's beautiful. And Cameron is um, well. He does know about the creative process definitely and that's something that I talk about a lot is that the create creative processes or creative arts are exactly the same as spiritual arts I think that we all are spiritual when we're um, consuming or performing or doing something that's creative and, and that means even as an audience member when you're enjoying a song when you're enjoying a film that is a spiritual kind of work and so I say that because Cameron is an actor and right. a very successful one for his 18 years. <laughs> very talented, clearly. What kind of you want to talk about? What kind of work you've been doing? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that firstly, just to kind of to comment on um, on you know the the whole creative versus spiritual approach. I think that um, you know spirituality, despite what kind of people have made it up to be and what some of these books will throw at you, is very much just about your relationship with the world around you. Yeah, you know, to yourself, to people, to to everything to your animals Mm -hmm. whatever whatever it is that's existing in your space Mm -hmm. um and obviously acting and writing and all of those mediums are about connecting with people so if you're in that place in your life where you're connecting with people naturally anyway all you have to do is give it a platform it it shouldn't take much you know yeah right exactly in spirituality is it's like spirituality or creativity whatever we're doing uh, it's like we're reaching out so that we can reach in and that's just that's the journey we keep uh, we keep taking to realize that we're actually all one that that there is no separation between us 
and um, so w- w- yeah, no, yeah I, maybe, I appreciate that. They you seem to be already off on a thing. No, I think you know. <laughs> I asked him a question we can't even get to. Maybe it <laughs> maybe you can throw a um, a uh, term on this, but I feel like there are phases of life specifically mm-hmm. where things reveal themselves to be far more connected than we than we realize. Yeah, and I think it tends to happen at the end of the year because it's definitely happening oh, for me. Definitely, you know, where where kind of random, seemingly serendipitous mm-hmm. uh, occasions start to go. You know, start to mesh, and you go, "Wow, yes. these things relate to each other, and right. this happened so that that could happen." And it, it, I don't, I don't know if there's is that a, is that a, absolutely. Yeah. And um, we've talked. I told you, I think when we were talking just the other day, that sometimes I will find myself having had some sort of um, hypersensitive time or something like that, sure. and then I'm not very educated in astrology, and then the next day everybody will be like, "Oh, this is going on in you know astrologically speaking," and so did you experience this? And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, yes, I did." That astrology is one thing because that's um, talking about how all of the how the the heavenly bodies are yeah. um, shifting energy and you know, again we're not there's no separation but definitely the cycles of the year I mean right now we're it's cold and even it's cold in Southern <laughs> California but it there is you, you know it's our it's cold it's, our version of cold right yeah, yeah it's um and it's no accident what we how we arrange the calendars that this is the end of a year and the next one is the beginning sure and there's actually many cycles inside of it the moon cycles our bodies and our uh, you know our, our mind body spirit that's a mechanism just like a combustion engine yeah absolutely and they respond to that so you know with the if you follow the moon phases you can can kind of really f- if you pay attention to it flow with um the in- with what is the natural kind of feeling about things and so with the new moon it's um it's time to begin manifesting and then we get to a seeding phase and then we get to um a dormant phase where we're releasing things mm-hmm. just you know just like what a farmer would be doing with his harvest absolutely and, yeah. and i feel like we do those things subconsciously even without that knowledge naturally of those phases. exactly completely right. naturally so, which is so, what so i find learning about it is just kind of validating yeah Yeah, Yeah. totally that's what i mean like i'm I'm almost i like that i'm ignorant about astrology because when i when it happens afterward and i'm like oh i'm not crazy (laughs) no no i know i get it well that's how i feel in my conversations with you (laughs) it's the same thing (laughs) that's great because you're like i said you were only 18 i was crazy for 38 years (laughs) before so we're doing okay you're doing great great. (laughs) you're doing fantastic now (laughs) you're gonna feel crazy several more times and i saw it hasn't it hasn't stopped it's just been (laughs) affirmed that i'm not the only one yes right and that's helpful yeah absolutely (laughs) you definitely Um, you obviously have some um, um, really important work that you've come to this life to do. I, I feel that way. No, <laughs> you know, I, I, no, it's, 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 it's definitely, that's like, that's a huge statement to make, but mm. I do feel, um, and I've always felt a really strong sense of purpose and yeah. especially in this, this decision to pursue an acting career. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that the nature of, of not, I mean, people talk about, you know, the acting industry as if it's, individually such a difficult place to make it yeah but i think it's just as hard to be successful in business as it is in acting sure. acting is a business so yeah. you know I, I think that they're very similar and i think that you have to go into whatever you're doing knowing that there's no guaranteed return yeah and so hopefully at the end of the day you can sleep knowing that whatever it is you're doing is feeding you you know is yes. is 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 speaking to your heart and, and helping you to express yourself and then hopefully that passion usually that passion in my opinion and in my experience kind of parlays into into working and into succeeding in that because there's so many people in every field that are just kind of doing it to do it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the people that really want to be there shine right so well and it, it, as we started the conversation about natural processes being a part right. of what nature uh, would would have us do or would have us do just the, how we respond that desire and that joy and that drive that you're talking about that is that you you know you really love it i think that is just like the information inside a seed that when it blows into a certain environment and ecosystem and then it flourishes there there's a you know the energy the information that makes it actually successful there is the same for that you yeah. know is yeah. that drive that passion that interest that joy we as humans are kind of unique in that we're more capable, most capable as compared to animals and nature to be able to go against that, to doubt that, to come in and be like, well, that can't be right. I'm supposed to do other things that right, aren't me. Right. Well, yeah. like, like we talked about the other day, though, yeah. it's kind of beautiful about that is that we do have our free will yes. and that we, uh, you know, so Trisha and I had this oh, conversation right. where we sort of 
uh, agree to this idea that we are all already the things that we want to be. Mm-hmm. If it's somebody wanting to be um, intellectually there or emotionally capable or available or more giving, we are already, you know, all of those things. Yeah. So uh, I think that, you know, it, it's kind of like we have a lot of those seeds and, yeah. yes. d- and, 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 and almost like genes, these things can be triggered. Uh, Mm -hmm. by certain experiences and sometimes it takes a traumatic experience or um, something that's kind of path altering for you to wake up one of those seeds and for me you know coming from St. Louis Missouri I would say that this you know LA is the environment I personally need for for my seed to to, 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 right your ecosystem yeah (laughs) Yeah. and I don't know if it'll always be that way I mean this town's a bit crazy but uh, (laughs) you know what I mean Um, but but I do think that this would be the environment to to cultivate the Mm -hmm. the the, the thing that I'm trying to grow so yeah, and and you did have one of you did have an experience that sort of really changed your trajectory. Yes? Oh, absolutely. You want to talk about that? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, so I was uh, it was very. I'm, I'm come from a sports family, so mm-hmm. my entire family has played sports there. You know, their entire lives. My dad and his two brothers were hockey, and my brother and I were baseball. And um, I sort of just didn't stop to consider anything else. And I was really really young at the time. Mm-hmm. I think I was in fifth grade when I got injured. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was playing baseball a lot. Mm-hmm. And I always kind of had this side of me that was very artistic that I didn't entertain because mm-hmm. I didn't have time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I don't know if I threw out my arm or, or what happened, but, you know, very top of our, our season as a pitcher, I, I blew out my arm. And um, and I had all this time. What we thought was going to be eight months was actually three years wow. of just, you know, <laughs> completely exploring a new identity um and i was really fortunate there was a a local arts center in st louis called coca Mm. which is the creative center of the performing arts and um i took every class there imaginable yeah i like it to the point like to a you know to a fall i mean it's like i took (laughs) obsession yeah uh, completely i mean i was taking like pottery making and wall carving and like you know like african drumming and like like my resume is off the like my special skills are like nothing you've ever seen before (laughs) it's it's absurd like a renaissance uh, man like david bowen oh completely like i can probably i can probably juggle like knives if i try like it's ridiculous but i did take circus camp there i'm not even kidding um (laughs) but yeah so i had so much time to to um really consider what I wanted and mm-hmm. and it was sort of like you said very naturally my, my path shifted mm-hmm. so I did not like I was not like I, I'm done playing baseball I'm gonna be an actor sure um, I just it was like co- coping mechanism how do I express the things I'm feeling and how do I explore this sort of new way of thinking that it hit me mm-hmm. very uncomfortably yeah um, and uh, yeah I mean the hell it was kind of like you have to sort of call it a health crisis like the mm-hmm. arm led to you know a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes mm-hmm. and and that just that strain of time, there was just so much reflection going on and so much. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, so much. What do I do next? What does this mean? Why is this happening? Right. Um, you know, and as we just found out, I mean, Trisha and I looked up uh, a day or two ago. It completely blew my mind. I'm pretty sure <laughs> oh, I couldn't, that's right. <laughs> couldn't speak for like 10 minutes. But we looked up in, in what's the book called? In, uh, it's Louise Hay's book. Uh, Louise Hay. Yeah. Um, you can heal your body or you can heal your life. I think it's your body. Your body. You can heal your body. And so she has in there a chart of all kinds of ailments, injuries, diseases, all that kind of stuff. And you can just look up a body part or an ailment. You could look up the common cold or you can look up, you know, left foot or something like that. And it'll tell you basically the kind of metaphysical or spiritual meaning behind that that injury or ailment, what your being is expressing or what it's really some kind of energy, stagnant energy that it wants to release is how I see it because your body, you know, the physical follows the non-physical. So your body is kind of like taking what has been happened non-physically all that time. And so Cameron was telling me, what's that? Put my mic down. I'm so sorry. Hello, everyone. Is that better? Thank you. Thank you, Jarvis. And hello to Jarvis. <laughs> Jarvis is a producer. He's not on camera, but he's here being lovely with us. Um, and so we were we were looking at we were talking about Cameron's elbow. Is that was the injury you meant? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, yeah, we were talking about the elbow, yeah. and um, and Trisha pulls up her book and opens it and just kind of laughs, and that's <laughs> never a good thing. So I stopped and looked at her, and um, the, the definition of, of an elbow injury is uh, is sort of resistance to the changing of direction, which <laughs> which is so wild because to say that. Um, you know, to say that I, I was very curious about about all this. Once we started talking mm-hmm. about what physical ailments kind of represent, I was very curious, not in a like, what could I have done differently? How could I have been thinking differently at that age? But mm-hmm. just like, I, I, you know, how can I 
how can I understand this process? And sure. and um, that just it just blew my mind. Yeah, and you, you don't know? have to think of the word resistance as so heavily laden right. with emotions. Right. Um, it, that. You I mean you were so young and you were just doing what we do. We adapt to our our social group. That's sure. obviously the best thing to do because you can't take care of yourself. So no, no. you you know you should want to right. um, be a part of your family and your group. So, but you're again the work that you clearly have to do. This um, knowing, this inner knowing that was trying to become conscious to you was like, yeah, yeah. this is this is not the seed information we want to prioritize. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's it's um, you know I, I'm I'm never really va- I've asked you. I mean, a lot of people will say that like the universe or your higher power is mm-hmm. sort of neutral, and others will say that that it's a little more involved. I sort of err on the side of neutral. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like it's just an energy that we're connected to. Sure, but yeah. I feel like um, you know very like alchemisty of me, but I feel like there's this sort of universal truth that the universe wants us to find the thing that we're passionate about or yes. that that feeds our heart because. If we're being fed, then we'll feed others, right? Absolutely. So there's no separation between right, us. Right. It's yeah. just you have to feed the farmer so the farmer can farm, right? Yeah, I mean, right. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. the same thing. And so I feel like um, I sort of maybe, again, I was young, so it doesn't matter, but I wasn't taking the, I was not aware that I was being nudged mm-hmm. in, a, in a better direction for me. Right. Um, and I say better, it doesn't mean what I was doing was wrong, but it's just something that may have been more exciting for me or mm-hmm. more, or more fitting to my, to me. To you, um, right. and uh, you know you don't you don't take the nudges and you don't take the hints, then you get slapped. So <laughs> I got I got kind of violently redirected. No. But I but I think that it, I mean I'm I, I'm thrilled that it happened, and you know so much of my perspective and uh, and just my the things that I feel I'm grounded in come from that experience. Yeah, and so. you learned the lesson. So I mean you can still use your arm, and there was a lot. You're telling me all of the it works. De- the details yeah. about how. If this didn't happen exactly, you know, this it could have paralyzed your arm and all this kind of stuff. So you did learn the lesson. You started pursuing um, your creative interests right away. You still play sports. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I um, it, I think that uh, this was the best thing that could have happened. And the reason I wouldn't change it is because it you could very my whole family now lives in Los Angeles with me, which is amazing. And uh you could argue that that started with an arm injury, mm-hmm. which is a bold statement to make, but you know, whatever, seven, eight years ago, yeah. that, that it started with that. I mean, I start kind of randomly stepping into this acting thing and all of a sudden I'm kind of taking it seriously and, and then all of a sudden I'm here and then my brother who's looking at Midwest school starts looking here and my mm-hmm. dad's job uh, kind of wigs out and the new one and like it's it, all of it, all of it, all the, the trajectory details. of yeah. our life, you know, it, it shifted. Sure. So, uh, I mean, I... Uh, I think it's great, and I think that, I think that you know, as far as the sports void, I, I filled that a year ago with tennis. You know, we, we go to the same club that we absolutely love, yeah. um, and I think that we're very capable of that. And I'm, this has been a year of realization for me of how in our hands our circumstances are. Right. Yes, yes. there are things mm-hmm. that are completely out of our control, and, and I firmly believe that while you can sort of put out there what you want, you can't dictate how it happens. Mm-hmm. But I do. And why but, would know, we want to? Because exactly. Because that would steal the, the, you know, that would spoil the ending. The thrill. <laughs> absolutely. No. Absolutely. No spoilers. If I know exactly what, then why do it? If I know exactly where I'm going. Right. No, that's a roller coaster mm. that goes in a straight line. It's not, <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly. you know, that's it's, not, fun. it's not exciting. But I do believe that, yeah. you know, so uh, for, for me, I mean, it's all, it's all kind of worked out as, as it was supposed to, I think. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, um, I promised to talk a little bit about sensitivity, empaths, right. highly sensitive people. And I, I think you're actually interested because we haven't really talked uh, sort of in definitive terms about what these things are. And I had people asking me on social media, what exactly is the difference? Someone actually asked me um, last night. I've been told I'm an empath. I've been told I'm sensitive. What's the difference? Are the same thing? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I was like, OK, I'll, I'll talk about it. Yep. It's, 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 it's kind of overwhelming. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's overwhelming because that's our level left brain trying to you know pin it down which is fine we like to take the right brain information and make it something that is um, linear and that's all fine but at the in the end you know the labels don't really mean anything uh, unless they do comfort us right. so that's it you no, know yeah, you can release yeah. anything that when right. it feels overwhelming right. that's just fine just well, I mean I, I, in my opinion I think that you know uh it's almost like two best friends that are complete opposites. You know, your left brain and your right brain yes. have completely different purposes, and yeah. together they form a beautiful human being. But yes. they don't speak the same language, right, and and right. and it's not 
often that they try to, but but right specifically, left trying to interpret right. Yeah. It's like you know somebody that doesn't know Spanish trying to speak it. It yes. sounds foreign, and so I think there's a lot of short circuiting and stress yes. and anxiety that comes with trying to understand things that we maybe don't need to. Right. You know, Not you know, yet. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't things have to that, eat all. The, you don't have to eat breakfast, lunch, yeah, and dinner exactly, right now. Like exactly. You said. I'm I'm focused on my <laughs> next meal, and, <laughs> yeah. and you know tomorrow. I will work towards the next one, but and sensitive people like like you and I are um, do have this thing where we get really kind of obsessed. Like you were saying about pursuing your creative interests at the uh, Coca. Is that what it was called? Uh, Coca, yeah, yeah Coca. Yeah. Taking basket weaving and you all know. of it. I, that might have been in there. It's um, <laughs> it is that. It's it's it it feels like um, it feels like you have all of this stuff to express because yeah. it's likely yes. it's mm-hmm. likely stuff that. Uh, I mean, I think when I kind of feel like I'm going to implode, it's probably because I am still learning how to leave other people's energy alone. Sure. We interact with so many people every day, and that's so great, mm-hmm. but we also assume people's energy all the time. Yes. And that's a very big for highly sensitive people and empaths, as you've kind of taught me. Yes. So learning to you know, not feel like you want to pull your hair out, I think, is, is very much... I interact with that person. I learn something, or maybe I didn't. It'll mm-hmm. sink in, and then I leave it alone. You can release it, right? right? Because if you don't, it just feels like you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you can't feel your own identity. Yeah. So let me uh, just um, give you a couple of, um, I guess, sort of definitions, some quick explanations about okay. what a few of these terms are. And this is, um, you know, so maybe maybe you identify with some of them, maybe you don't. I don't I'm not really interested in I'm, I'm I am interested in always being open and always changing myself so I don't know if you come back to me in two years I may think this is all different so this none of this is meant to we be reserve the right to change and grow yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah and none of this is meant to be like um a hard core um you know science or well actually there's some science here but anyway I mean it just these definitions aren't set in stone and so I just don't want anyone to feel like um what I'm saying, if it doesn't really resonate with their understanding of themselves or however they've been identifying, that's fine. So highly sensitive person. This is a scientific term. This is something that was um, studied by a doctor named Dr. Elaine Aron, A-R-O-N. And um, what a highly sensitive person is, um, a highly sensitive person is more, uh, their uh, nervous system is hypersensitive, more sensitive than the average person. So you might be more sensitive to all kinds of stimuli, um, smells, sound, light, um, uh, you know, all of the Anything that is a physical sensory experience, you would be more sensitive to it. And I, you know, it's funny because I, I worked in um, restaurants and bars and I worked in like nightclubs for years. Craziest thing for an empath to do, right? Or a highly sensitive person. Probably the most overwhelming thing you could possibly do. So, over- pick. oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. I was like, I don't know how I made it through. It was, thank goodness I was younger, and my um, I hadn't used my body too harshly yet. <laughs> it, it wears very quickly, though. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, as an eighteen-year-old, <laughs> right. sometimes yeah. I swear to you, like I joke with my friends, I'm like the old man from Up with the <laughs> suspenders. Like all I need is a little touch of gray in my hair, and I mean, it just sometimes, you know, I think that this, I started getting gray at twenty-five. So, you know, yeah. I'm I'm fingers crossed, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I think that this is something that will exhaust you if you don't understand it. Right. So as far as you know, you defining terms and telling people that um, you know that that they don't need to worry if it doesn't align with them exactly. This whole thing you should feel is completely for you. It's yeah. So exactly. Good. Yeah. I mean, I'm no. I'm learning out of necessity. Yes, yeah. I'm curious, but I'm I'm in that place now of like I can't continue. You know, uh, I, yeah. I wouldn't have been able to continue a year ago, right. kind of moving forward, not understanding my body because yes, yes. You know, I'm, I'm in school right now. And and I think that this hyper hypersensitive thing uh, can lead to a lot of kind of focus issues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's the, but there is such a distinction between this and, you know, a diagnosis of like ADHD. Sure. They're just not yes. the same. And so yes. I think it's really isolating at first because you're like, I don't understand. There are times when I'm so locked in and for eight hours straight, I'm working and I'm productive and then I have another day where I get up and my body's like I don't want to work today yeah and you're like but what do you mean but I need to work today yeah and everybody ar- else works yeah and you and you argue with it and you know and, and your parents and your friends are like dude just just work and you're like I'm I can sit at this screen for as many hours as you want right. but some I, it's not gonna happen right so learning what that means and why that's being communicated is like is everything and it's taking that process there is taking back your agency taking back yeah the the um identity with the fact that I am my own advocate. I'm I'm responsible for me as my to advocate for myself and I'm doing a disservice to 
others, including those who love me, if I don't do that. Yeah. Because they can't be me. Only I can. Yeah. And so, yeah, sensitive bodies. And it's not something you can just become, de- you can't become desensitized. And I used to wear um, earplugs when I was working in the nightclubs. And there were two reasons why. One reason was because I, you can actually, I could hear the voices of people better because there was loud music and there was loud people shouting and stuff like that. And I could actually hear the conversations better when someone was speaking to me because I was cutting out a lot of the excess highs and lows and I could just hear the mid tones better. Mm -hmm. I was taking, you take in a lot less information. My father-in-law is a pilot and he says, absolutely. If it's a loud environment, you should be wearing earplugs also because they don't, you know, the, the, the little villi, the little, um, sensitive uh, like hairs, that. Yep, yep, yeah that take yep. in the inf- that take in sound are very fragile so you right. know hear- hearing loss they have really they've done a lot of uh, with the cochlear ear plants ear implants but you know the, the, it's not as easy as say getting laser eye surgery yeah, still yeah. <laughs> i think I, I just sort of and you know at any time if we feel like where our direction is kind of shifting you, you kind of you know guide me back but i think that uh just talking about the earplugs thing mm-hmm. i think that um and this is totally natural because you, you know when you when you come into the world you haven't experienced anything yet and it's it's all observation and we spend a lot of our time observing. Mm-hmm. So before you've experienced love, you observe it. Before you have experienced relationships or school or whatever, you've observed it. And so these are ideas, and we chase ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, and ideas oftentimes come with judgment mm-hmm. because when we experience the real thing, in my in, in my experience, when we experience the real thing, we go, well, well this doesn't match up to the idea. It's different. It, right. So it must yes. be wrong. And all I'm saying is that. Earplugs worked for you, mm-hmm. and 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 th- and that's so that makes it right. Yes. And if um and if meditating three times a day works for me, great. But if somebody watching the show is going, well, I I tried meditation and it doesn't help me focus. That doesn't mean that it's that, that nothing works for you. Right. It's just it's kind of make it a fun process, mm-hmm. like getting to know a new best friend. But the best friend is you. You know, mm. getting to really understand what works for you. Right. If it's you know, some people I know people that are you know brilliant and creative that do not start writing or work until the AMs because mm-hmm. that is when something is on for them. I have and, a friend like that too, and they're kind of nocturnal, and, and it's he, kind yes, of weird. And but, he sleeps until about he has to. If we go to lunch yeah. at three, he has to set an alarm, yeah. and that's fine. But he gets he gets people yeah. that know that like or you know you're lazy, and he's like really because I did I had a lot more focused time because all y'all were sleeping, and you weren't bugging me. <laughs> it's just it. I mean, it's, it's it's whatever your body is telling you it needs. Take that seriously mm-hmm. because as opposed to discounting and saying I'll, I'll you know I'll shut this this is strange mm-hmm. I have so many of those weird little things that I that I that I do that help me to feel grounded and present and I'm still yes. it's like a toolbox that you form as you move through life of okay in this moment I'm not grounded let me try something maybe it's a little mantra maybe it's um just you know kind of feeling your body I mean we can activate our central yes. nervous system just by touching our you know our arms and our chests and yeah, whatever yeah. So placing your awareness on a part of your body or your entire body. So, yeah, yeah. whatever it is, it's just experiment. If you're bo- if you have an, a weird inclination to, uh, to to do something like that, go for it. Right. You know, and even the, yourself... the stones that you have here. Yeah. You know, that's a great crystals. example. Yeah. I, I have, you know, uh, turquoise on my on my keys. And when I get anxious, I, I, I sort yeah. of work that through my hands. Feel that guy. You know. Yeah. And, th- and I'm so glad you're bringing up tips because that's part of what I wanted to do today was give some tips. And so, well, and so to finish with highly sensitive person, finish with, but it's, they also, um, Dr. Aaron also observed that highly sensitive people are um, adept at um, perceiving moods and just the energy in a space and a room and between people and the dynamic. And, um, and overall, this all catch all, this is what I think is to, on any of these different th- terms we're going to talk about, it really just means that um, there are people that are more naturally um, adept at uh, deciphering or understanding vibrational language, vibrational content. Yeah. And, you know, so that's what, like for me with the, with the noise that I could hear too much of it, I perceived too much of it and it was overwhelming because I took in too much information. So yeah. with my physical ears being um, treated a bit, I could better, I, I had more stamina. Yeah. Yeah. I was taking in less information. Yeah. So that's highly sensitive. Empath is usually I, sort of I don't know if I've ever met an empath. An extension of <sighs> kind of yeah. I mean, it's just I mean it's 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 almost like an a, a, just a, another step greater in the in the in the amount of kind of frequency coming in. Yeah, you know? yeah, something um, like that definitely. Yeah. For I think I don't know if I've ever met an empath that is not also a highly sensitive person. And maybe there is. I'm not really sure. I don't know that 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 that, that it makes that, a lot that, of sense. Right, right. <laughs> right. I don't I don't know that that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I don't think it makes sense. Yeah, but um. 
I do have uh, people who are very who are highly sensitive, and they don't have some of the experiences that I have and other people have as empaths. So, you know, so and being an empath, really, the distinction is kind of like all of that stuff we just talked about. But then there's this extra component of we really do feel other people's emotions and thoughts as though they are our own. Like we have naturally kind of no boundaries. We have to find that agency on our own. And it hap- And even after you become skilled at it and you get better at knowing where you are, what is coming from you genuinely, um, and what is from outside, you st- I still have to be reminded all the time. And you keep seeing how you do it in, in a lot more subtle ways. At least this is my experience. I, my husband has to tell me every now and again, I'm coming to him with something, and he'll be like, hold on. Are you sure that the people in the room weren't feeling and thinking this? And I'll be like, what? Oh, yeah. They were a bunch of salespeople. Of course, they were freaking out about this thing that <laughs> has nothing to do Absolutely. with how I yeah. normally yeah. think. Um, and that's no, yeah. literally happened to me Absolutely. a lot. And it's wonderful I have him as because he's like, that. this isn't sounding like you. I'd like right away. Let's let's not even go into this conversation anymore because it's going. if it stresses you out needlessly, my sweet husband will do this for me. And one thing that I just discovered recently about being an empath, and it was actually like, so my husband was having a rough time with something. Okay. Closest person to me, obviously. Absolutely. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, do you want to talk about it? Because we hadn't talked about it. I just, he's in the room. I can feel it. And he knows I can feel it. And I was like, do you want to talk about it? And he said, no. And I was like, okay. And I, he's like, yeah, I get that. You know, sometimes you don't want to talk about things you need. I just wanted him to know that I was there. And then I immediately heard like my guides say, hey, look. You, as an empath, have very subtle ways that you can be codependent. So even though you're not having him talk to you about it, don't send, put this kind of, cut, cut the cord between you. Don't feel it either. Stop feeling his business because he needs, he, it's not going to help him. He stated it. So it's kind of like a codependent, very, very subtle codependence. And it's not helpful to either one of us, which codependence isn't. That was really interesting to me to feel how does, how subtle some kind of um, imbalance can be yeah, when I mean, you're that's, that sensitive. That's, see, that's that's one of those tools, and I think yeah. that I think that the self awareness of of you know being highly sensitive or being an empath, uh, you have to lean into that because yeah. it, it's yes. it's the difference between in that moment you understanding that and not yes, um, and and then that's now something that you're aware of. You know right. that you know that if some if you, if you reach out to somebody and it's such a it's a beautiful thing that you have the ability to do that and they sort of say hey i need to work through this that okay so this person needs their independence and and it's not going to benefit me to to feel what they're feeling so yeah. i i mean i'm going to detach and, and sort of go about my my day and my business and send hopefully them you know kind thoughts and you can energy just put and whatever, love and, between you yeah exactly yeah. you can just put like a wall i'm sorry banging my microphone like an amateur you can just put a wall of love between you so that you aren't you know, just kind of vampiring, taking it from Absolutely. them. Absolutely, you know? yeah. And I tell my clients, and I tell, I've said this before in, in different kinds of educational talks I give, for empaths, sensitive people, just because you can feel it doesn't mean you should. I'm going to say it again. Just because you can feel it doesn't mean you should feel it. And um, I do know how to... I am much better like in that those subtle realms. I understand how my energy is out there or how I'm receiving things. So um, that was just another another lesson and look at how um, look at how subtle it is. And and then also with people that you're extremely close to you. I found recently with um, one of my oldest friends that um, I, I just it's uh, we have a connection that is so old that I have to really look closely to see if I am doing that kind of subtle codependent thing, you know, Absolutely. with your family. And, you know, Absolutely. That's why they're the most yeah. challenging relationships. Yeah. They're yeah. the greatest teachers for us. Yeah. I think, I think, um, you know, I, as I'm sort of leaning into this process, I, I certainly try to surround myself with people who are, you know, who are like-minded mm-hmm. and I think that it's really important in sort of being an active participant in your journey uh, as opposed to watching it sort of unfold and stepping back, it's really important to engage with those people about what you're experiencing because yes. they can help you. You know, you, somebody like you know your husband can say, "Hey, I know you're doing this, and, yeah. and maybe you shouldn't." It's the same thing. It's you. the same thing as like if I was you know trying to get a friend to stop eating junk food, like that's maybe not the best habit, and I was you know watch them go to the pantry and said, "Hey, is that the you know is that the best idea?" It's the sure. same exact thing. Yeah. So for somebody to be able to say, "Hey, I, I know you're, you're kind of." 
latching a bit and and, and I, it probably doesn't feel great just maybe maybe you know maybe don't do that yeah so right. it's, it's yeah and it's, it's great to to include like with anything with with any successes in life and with growth it's great to if you can include people right and not especially with this not isolate yourself because there's a tendency when we kind of freak ourselves out and go oh my god what is this new thing to step to, to to do this yes when we're such people people yeah you know what i mean we're, yeah. we're, we're we it's, it, it actually helps us to sort through our a lot of times right our sort of um challenges that were you know mentally or, or emotionally when we're with people right um, absolutely yeah i mean like last night i was kind of in in, in one of those places of just heavy thinking mm. and it was great and it was mm-hmm. productive but it's the same thing as doing homework or, or, or getting or doing work for x amount of time you have to step away yes so right. knowing like okay i'm gonna put this away for a bit and just go be with people and sort of watch these things that have sunk into me go out into the world right you know? right right yeah. yeah let it flow rather than let you because your left brain like we we're saying earlier kind of gets a hold of wants it. to control and yeah and, and, yeah yeah, over, yeah starts overthinking completely so, okay so then you know like just sensitive people creative people in general um i think they all kind of fall in all of these areas um sensitivity uh, emotional sensitivity uh, probably a lot of people listening or watching maybe you are you're too sensitive that kind of thing and that's very frustrating because you know you're like oh well being uh, insensitive is better there's a balance and i just want to say that this sensitivity whether it's physical emotional spiritual energetic it is a gift and it, it you do you have it at a soul level you brought it into this existence so that you could re- remember how to um stay in touch with love and to stay in touch with others and to be able to be in that space for everyone to be that presence of hey well here's love and i know what's going on with you but the the deal that we have to learn is to to not take in the others information to the detriment of our own life force absolutely I, i think i think maybe one of the like the the best way for me uh to personally kind of say that or sum that up is that every time you interact with somebody you sort of have to engage in like a little two step mm-hmm. the the first one being you know because obviously like our relationships with people some some last 5 minutes some mm-hmm. are an interaction in the coffee shop some mm-hmm. last a year some last 10 years and that's its own natural process the, you know i think that during that time people exchange kind of tools and gifts mm-hmm. and then you know move apart to grow separately and sometimes they grow together forever and and whatnot but i think that um you sort of have to every time you interact with a person say to yourself okay out of out of love for them and out of love for people I am going to, you know, send you on your way with as much positivity and love as I possibly can. Yes. Um, and then, most importantly, is saying, but out of love for myself, I'm not going to place my happiness in your success or failure. Yes. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to be codependent mm-hmm. to the point where, you know, again, where where this person's feelings are determining my own. Right. So there's sort of that, like, sending you out with love and, and, and putting that out in the world and then also, you know protecting yourself a bit and it's not putting up a wall which is such a common different i, I feel thing it's different for, yes it's not for, about resi- yeah. it's not about having boundaries um and i do a, i have a meditation that is really i think is really good for empaths it's 15 minutes so it's a guided meditation it's 15 minutes and it's on my website and it's also on the youtube channel um but it's a it's to help sensitive people to keep their life force contained and um, having those boundaries are not about keeping others out like a resistant kind of defensive thing it's more about keeping yourself in and having your awareness so that you can be strong and help others if that's right you know the what's on your heart yeah i mean it's it's just just pay yourself the same courtesies that you pay other people if, if you're spending rule. if you're spending right it's the, the yeah, treat others the way you want to be treated mm-hmm. flip that flip treat it. yourself the way that you treat you know I well, mean, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do you yeah. one better okay that if you love your neighbor as yourself it's just a simple statement you can only love your neighbor as much as you love yourself it's not possible it's just simply you yeah. do it's not yeah. like saying hey why don't you love your neighbor as you love yourself right. it's saying hey guess what which, you which, love your which neighbor is, which as is you a love bit, yourself which is a bit counter, counterintuitive <laughs> because you know we say to ourselves yeah. well if, if I'm if I'm, if I'm so stuff. yeah if I'm so wrapped up in my own world I, I can't be you know taking care of the people I love but mm-hmm. what's funny is if you view if you view you know your sort of people as standing around you in a circle you know we we and I there's another just another thing I really feel like I've learned this year is that we you know re- reflect out into the world what's going on inside of us absolutely so mm-hmm. if you're at peace and you're in a good place and and and, and you're at calm 
you're going to project that onto everybody. Yes. And if you're not, the, the same can be said. If you're anxious and kind of at war inside and, and conflicted, you'll project that. And, and energy is the highest currency. So, mm-hmm. you know, if we were talking about it in money terms, right, you're, you know, your, your thoughts are worth a dollar, your, 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 your words, your speech is worth 10, your actions are worth 100, and your energy is worth and your intentions are worth a thousand or ten thousand. So no matter how many dollar bills I pay you and how many tens I pay, no matter how much money I give you in my actions and in my my thoughts, if my intentions aren't right or if my energy is off, you're going to feel that thing that a lot of sort of not highly sensitive people will say a lot, which is somebody rubbed me the wrong way. Oh, sure. That's like somebody who's not, you know, totally self-aware feeling somebody else's energy and not knowing what what it is. So, yeah, I think that... you have it, it's it's counterintuitive, but focusing on well, you it's counterintuitive first, only because you know. of social conditioning. Absolutely, it's actually yeah. intuitive. But yes, if, if from sure. the perspective of what we're taught, oh, you know, I should check Jarvis. Do we? I knew we had a phone call earlier. Did did they stick around? Oh, okay. Then do you mind? Shall we take the the call? Uh, and, absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah. And uh, hello, you're on the air. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Who's this? Hello. Yes, it's can... Sandy. How are you? Hi, Sandy. Good. How are you? I'm great. What's going on with you I'm today? great. Well, I was just, um, well, I, I had mentioned something about uh, sensitivity on your post there. Oh, okay. But yeah. I was also calling in to, um, I don't know, to maybe see if um, uh, there was anything either one of you could pick up. Anything in what in what regard, darling? Um, in 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 what do you mean it, about your sensitivity or mm-hmm. about some kind of life? Uh, issue? No, it is, yes, about about you know my life or um, some type of maybe connection. Okay, so um, let me see. I. I'm just feeling into your energy a little bit. And you're um, so we have some life purpose, but it's also like career oriented concerns. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. And so um, for, I mean, you, you kind of see, you're seeing them one in the same and um, the career for you is not only not, it's not totally fitting you. You're not totally comfortable with it. Um, it's also not serving you in all of the other material ways very well. Is that correct? Right. Right. And mm-hmm. um, and so and you feel like it's sapping some of your energy. It's distracting you. And you have this greater um, tug on your heart, this greater calling. Um, and I do I'm, I'm just hearing right now, like in my ear, um, healing arts, healing arts, healing arts. Um, and I think that you do feel the pull to that. Have you been looking at some kind of interest in something that's bodywork, massage or Reiki or something like that? Is that something you've um, been entertaining? You've been looking around on that? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I was looking at Reiki yesterday. Okay. All right. So, yeah. um, I do, okay, here's, this is what I'm getting. I'm getting that the Reiki is, is a really great way for you to jumpstart, um, just a different direction. I see that if you were to get into that, um, it looks like you might start in one place and, and if that isn't a perfect fit, whether it's the teacher or the material, that that's just because you're going to excel at it really fast. And what that would mean is that um, you can just change directions and, and find the next um, resource for it. Um, I see that it could be um, something that is, like I say, a, a great way to kickstart stuff for you, to, to help you to change your direction or at least to catalyze um, this what you're feeling as a longing and a yearning. It'll actually catalyze some action to it. It'll it'll um, open up. It'll kind of create a, a mini awakening. And um, But the deal with it is it might actually diminish for you because what you're going to grow into, you have so much to grow into. And um, But it's, it, what that will do is um, start to get you um, educated and exercising in, in healing and energetic um, kinds of ways. And then it's... Um, uh, what have I got here? I do see you that that you could take some positions teaching. I don't see it necessarily being large groups because you like to connect. I see them as small and medium groups doing some kind of teaching. But again, it's in the area of wellness, healing, um, spirituality. Um, does that does that resonate with you where we're going right now? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, Trisha. Okay, great. It does. Um, uh, the education part, too. Okay. Uh, resonates with me. Okay, yeah. cool. So what I would say um, is definitely keep looking into the Reiki thing. W- the the 
the first step ahead of you that it's going to do is it's going to um, you're going to give yourself permission to start pursuing this. It's going to be validating for what's in your heart, and then it's also it's going to just help you maintain because you can't just you're not going to quit today. The the whatever's going on with the actual job, and that's fine. But it's going to um, give you that inspiration so that even when you go into the work that you have right now, you're going to feel more inspired. You're going to feel more connected, and you're going to feel already like, hey, in this moment of this day in this job that is totally fine that I'm ready to move on from it. That's just a stage that I'm in, but I am living my divine purpose in this moment because there are people here and there are people on the street on the way to the thing. And, um, you're going to get that activation. You're going to get like an attunement by just giving yourself permission to pursue the interest of it. And then you have a lot of ways to go and it's all very exciting. And just know that the step that you take on your path, even though it's the very first one, just because it's the next one, the very next one that you take, the one that you're, they're standing in right now is seamlessly connected to the destination in every single path every single step along the path so you are on your path and um the, the, and you know just That's great yeah honey just you yesterday you Can started I ask one more question yeah honey What's yesterday that? well when okay. you started looking at reiki you know <laughs> you started it in a oh, really yes, eff- yes. effective oh, way yes 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 i was like yesterday um is there a possibility that if you could see anything um from a loved one or um, someone who's passed. Hold on one sec. Jarvis, do we have just two minutes? Yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. We have just a couple minutes. Can I go over a little bit? Okay, cool. All right. Let me get back into that. So you have a loved one that's passed. Um, there's a female. This Is this is this an aunt? Do you have an aunt that's passed that you were, um, well, I don't know if you were close to her in this life, but um, she's, overlo- she's looking um, over you now. Um, she uh, has light colored hair. She had light colored hair. And... Um, is, are you, is this ringing a bell right now? Because she may not be someone you're on the planet with at the same time. No. Okay, well, anyway. My she, mom has passed. My grandmother had light-colored hair. Okay, this is this is an aunt. She's standing in, in the same level with your mom. Okay, here's the deal. Your mother, it hasn't been that long since your mother passed. Is it like a couple of years? Yep. Okay. So, um, yes. so this aunt is in your mother's lineage, and I actually think she's like a great aunt of your mother. Your mother is now still doing kind of her own... Um, spiritual development it's like she's taking classes and whatnot and so your aunt is there in her place right now your mother does come in and she does spend time with you but she's actually um just developing herself on the other side and so your aunt is standing in that mother energy on her behalf Ooh, i just got chills um because she's t- i just... think i know who you're talking about okay great so just yeah the first one has told me that Oh, okay. So you, so definitely, aunt, yes. your mother is. Um, anytime you need her, anytime you think of her, she's right there. She's on your heart. Um, she w- does. Uh, your aunt is saying like she's going to be stepping up and being becoming a very strong guide for you. But right now, she's just doing some development and kind of doing projects and stuff so that she can feel very powerful and you know just be in that space that she wants to be in to sort of start her work while she's on the other side and in the meantime your aunt is her proxy and definitely she's always available to you how's that sound okay just what do you don't have a, a an initial or anything like that i just want to make sure it's the right aunt i'm sorry you want to make sure it's the right aunt okay i don't know well let's see uh, well there's two right there's two aunts i'm only picking up one right now um Okay, well, I don't know. L L L L is showing up, so it could be the it could be at a significant L in the name, or it could oh be a beginning. Oh my god! This is the right one. Yeah. Okay, that's the one you were thinking well, of. Well, there's Elizabeth and Eleanor. Okay, so it's probably Elizabeth because then maybe she went by Liz, but L L so L Elizabeth, you know, yeah, that's probably Eleanor. Right. Eleanor. Oh well, okay. So you've got two. You've got yeah. an Elizabeth and an Eleanor. That's my mom. That's our middle names. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's my mom's great aunt. She just loves. Oh, oh, Eleanor is the one that I'm feeling is the right one. It feels like Eleanor. Do you feel connected? Yeah. So did you know her? Is this someone that was on the planet at the same time as you? or? Um, she was, but I was young when she passed, but my mother talked very highly of her. Oh, how nice. Um, well, then that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, like I, one of my guides is actually my great-grandmother, and I was not on the planet at the same time as she. We have ancestral guides, and, the you know, that all means something. Um, of course, the relationships we form while – on the planet, whether we're related or not, are, uh, you know, eternal. And then there's the ancestral ones and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much for calling in. I think we're just about uh, out of time. Uh, but Trisha, just, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Really lovely to talk to you. And um, I hope you'll tune in next okay. time, too. Yeah, good luck with everything. Yeah. 
We have, okay, thanks a lot. We have Thank just, you for We have just a couple minutes there, Jarvis? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, then we can do a little a little signing off. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Cameron, by the way, is an empath. You mind me sharing that? <laughs> yeah, and he's just learning about it. So that's why we um, wanted to talk about this today. Um, I love some of the tips that Cameron was giving, and I just wanted to run down a little list of some really simple things because you were talking about basically doing the physical stuff because the physical impacts the non-physical and vice versa. You it's, know, it, it's all so connected. I think that it's com- um, it's one mechanism. Yeah, it's the same thing as like. You know, you look at the power of an idea. I mean, the fact that, you know, th- throughout our history, one man or one woman oftentimes has started with an idea and all of a sudden, you know, millions of people are following that person. Yes. You know, so you have the ability to to do just about anything with your ideas. And, and the same way that, like, when I was younger, I used to say goodbye to every stuffed animal in the bed, you I know, did, before. Did, yeah. we, did we share that? No. no oh, my I've gosh. Never, I've never heard that. Oh, we, we but, have to. But, everyone, know, and I still remember them. And we're going to talk about this I later. I do, too. But no, but, you know, out. there was there was a lot of them. And, and it was just something that made me feel better. Yeah. And, I mean. And you had a special good. I'm sorry. I'm know, freaking out. Because I've actually written this in my book, Cameron. No, you know, so obviously it's not like. The animals are not, this is not going to happen. Your animals are not going to talk back. To, I mean, you know, your, your stuffed animals are not going to say hello. But it, I did that for me. And and that spirit of just sort of doing things for myself has evolved. So whether it's talking to myself through something or or at night, you know, saying I, I'm, you know, sending love to a person that I miss. Yeah. I believe that they receive that. Absolutely, so, because know. again, your the vibrational language yeah. you're very yeah. um, articulate in. So hey, run, run down. I know we have. Oh, just that's a okay. We got a minute, that. but yes. I want to tell yeah. you that was uh, that was a metaphysical practice. We're going to talk about later, Fantastic. and I'll, I'll fill everyone in on yeah. it next week. No. We're going to talk about it after the show. Um, wash your hands, um, brush your teeth, wash your hair. Your thoughts get stuck in your hair. That's why Buddhist monks don't have hair. Um, you can clear yourself with selenite. You can cut etheric cords. These are things you can just look up, or I'll talk about another time. You can just bring divine light in through your light body um, to shower your body. You could take like a spiritual shower and then fill your bubble. You'll learn about that if you look at my, uh, go to my website or my YouTube channel and you'll t- do that guided meditation. It talks about filling your bubble with the divine uh, light, the life force energy. Yeah. So. No, I think I think just uh, attach purpose to your activities. If, if it like, you know, they talk about liter- in literature, uh, bathing, you know, and, and swimming and, and, and showering is all very uh, cleansing. It is. And it's obviously in, in religion, it's a huge thing as well. It it's is, this yes. idea of coming up and being reborn. So if a shower for you is what you need to sort of before going out, just take care of yourself. If you feel like you're about to go out with people and you're not there yet, don't. You and know you can I mean? do it with consciousness. So Cor- that it's, correct that, it's you know, deeply, so that you yeah. can go out and be generous with your energy and enjoy yourself. So if yeah. it is the shower, great. If it's reading a chapter of a book, mm-hmm. great. If it's giving yourself a hug, like it, do what you need to do. And figure out what those things are, and and enjoy that process because it will you'll, your entire life. I think you're going to be discovering those things, yeah. and um, just enjoy this process because it's one meal at a time. Just, just, <laughs> one meal at a time. On, Give you yourself know. permission yeah. to love you and take care of you. Well, I think that's our show today. Thank you so much to my guest Cameron Gelman Thank you so for much coming for in today me, yeah. for Thank the you. wonderful conversation and for sharing. Um, you can find me at trishacarcharm.com or at trishacarcharm. I'll, my handles for all my social media. We'll be here again next week at 11 a.m. Pacific, live on UBNRadio.com. And thank you for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Woo!